Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. You join me once again at my paint station. Because the other day, I realised I needed to buy some new paint brushes. Which is not something I like to do, I try to do it as infrequently as possible. But while making that purchase, I thought to myself, paint brushes is something I've never really talked about on the channel. And I figure, people coming into the hobby, people who are new to painting, it might be useful to briefly discuss paint brushes. And I'm not really going to give tips or recommendations here, because I think... Everybody kind of has their own way of approaching painting. I tend to prefer using branded paintbrushes. I use a lot of Games Workshop paintbrushes, but also Army Painter paintbrushes. And I think having good quality branded brushes is useful for me. It helps me. I know what I'm getting when I go into a shop and buy a Games Workshop brush. And also, it just so happens that the hobby shop just down the road from me stocks Games Workshop paintbrushes, so it's easy, even though they do work out quite expensive. But of course, I know there are many people who will say they are overpriced and not worth the money, and there are people who will say that any regular paintbrushes, even very cheap paintbrushes, are just as good. So I think everybody has to find their own way eventually, and will tend to fall on particular brands that they enjoy using more than others. As I said, I predominantly use Games Workshop brushes because they're easy for me to get hold of and I've used them a lot so I know what kind of quality to expect when I buy them and I know what I can do with them. Look, here's a whole bunch of them. The downsides are of course they are expensive and if you plan on buying more than a couple of paint brushes you're probably going to get a bit of a sticker shock when you see how much it costs for all of those brushes. The other problem is Games Workshop offer so many types of paint brushes. They have base brushes, layer brushes, dry brushes, technical tools, artificer brushes, all in different sizes. And if you're new to the hobby, that can seem quite daunting. It can seem quite intimidating. It's not really clear exactly what you might need. And Games Workshop don't sell a beginner's paintbrush set as such. If you go onto their website, you can get paintbrush bundles, but really those are just entries on the web store where they have bundled some brushes together for convenient one-click ordering. There's no discount there. And really, you're probably getting more brushes than you need for a lot more money than you need to spend. Even their essential brushes set comes in at £34.45. Their 18 brush set comes to £122.50. Although I have quite a few different Games Workshop brushes in different sizes and styles, there are really only a few that I use regularly, and if you have watched any of my paint videos, you will see most of them being used in every video. I have two base brushes, I have a small one and a large one. I tend to use the large one, and these are really just for slopping Abaddon Black over my base primer normally. If I've done a Chaos Black spray undercoat on a miniature, I will tend to then cover the whole miniature again with Abaddon Black. So that's what I will use this brush for mainly. They are useful, of course, for coating large areas. If you're painting terrain, you can slop a lot of paint over a wide area relatively quickly. My medium and small layer brushes are my workhorses. These are the paint brushes that I go back to time and time again. They will work for pretty much all of the coats that I want to put down on a miniature. And of course, the small brush will deal with any of the finer details, with the exception of things like eyes. Then of course I have my trusty medium shade brush. How else am I going to apply my Agrax Earth Shade? I use this brush for all of my wash applications. And then of course I have my dry brushes. I have several different sizes of dry brush. I tend to use this large one quite frequently because usually when I'm dry brushing, I'm not doing a targeted dry brush. I'm dry brushing over large areas. If I need to target dry brushing to a very specific area and I don't want to get paint on surrounding areas, I do have a much smaller one that I will use. So those are the brushes that I go back to time and time again. I think it's also worth noting that if you buy some of the Games Workshop starter paint sets, you will sometimes get a starter brush. I've got a couple of these in my collection. I never use them. They are pretty standard brushes. They are not great, but they will get the job done. When you're first starting out, this is as good as anything, I guess, for putting some paint onto a miniature, but I tend to not use them. But when I first came back to painting, after having taken a break from the hobby to go to university, I didn't have a lot of money and I wanted a lot of paints and tools as quickly as possible and cost effectively as possible. So I purchased a big army painter set and that is how I got back into the hobby. And the army painter set included a set of brushes and that set of brushes got me back into painting and they were really the only three brushes that I used for quite a while. 
and I still have them in my paint set. They were a regiment brush, an insane detail brush, and a small dry brush. The dry brush I don't use anymore, and the regiment brush, this was a really good brush for putting base coats down on miniatures. It kept me going for a long time. The insane detail brush has seen better days, but I do still occasionally use it for dotting in the eyes on my miniatures. You will occasionally see my insane detail brush turn up in videos. So that was a really good set for me, and I think something like that with a base coat brush, a detail brush, and a dry brush is really a good way to get started without spending a lot of money on paint brushes. And I will get back to that in a moment. I just wanted to briefly mention I do have some non-brand brushes as well in my collection. For Christmas, my wife purchased me a large set of these H&B brushes, which I'd never heard of before. They were sold as miniatures painting brushes, but they are quite unusual in that they have the longest bristles I've ever seen for miniatures painting. I do occasionally use these for reaching into very hard to reach places on pre-assembled miniatures, but really I find these very difficult to use. Just to compare them, you can see the difference in the bristle length from the H&B brush to the small layer brush from Games Workshop. And finally, as a bit of a random aside, I have a bunch of these old nail brushes and the reason I have these is because they are flat and square ended and that can be really useful for certain things. For example, they are perfect for applying a black or grey rim to the base of your miniatures. The width is just right and it's a nice quick way of applying that to your bases. But anyway, I'm going on and I don't know if any of this is particularly useful to anybody, but I wanted to show you finally what I purchased the other day. I found this set online for eight pounds. Look, it's Nolzer's marvelous brush set, D&D branded brushes. Will the D&D branding help my painting to improve? I very much doubt it. But I thought this was a really good starter brush set, not least because it is produced by the army painter for D&D. I liked this set because it reminded me very much of that brush set that I had from Army Painter way back in the day because it has a base coat brush, it has a detail brush, I don't think it's as insane as the detail brush that I had already, and it has a small dry brush. It's a really good set of your workhorse paint brushes. I also like the fact that on the back of the packaging it has instructions for what to do with each type of brush which is really useful for people just getting started with painting. It says the base coat brush is used for base coating miniatures. The size is perfect for administering colours in the right places without drowning the model in paint. The detail brush is used for adding tiny details to your miniature such as eyes, tattoos, belt buckles etc. The sharp point also enables you to make tiny black outlines between your base colours. And finally the dry brush and it has instructions on how to do dry brushing. Use a lighter colour than your base coat, then apply paint to your dry brush and wipe the excess paint off using a cloth or tissue. Move the brush quickly back and forth over the raised areas to get the effect. Useful tips for people who are brand new to painting. And of course these are produced by Army Painter and I have experience with the Army Painter brushes and I've always found their quality to be reasonable. This dry brush seems pretty good for targeted dry brushing. For larger areas, you would probably want a much larger dry brush like the one that I showed earlier in the video. The base coat brush has a nice point to it and it should be noted these are synthetic bristles. And the detail brush has a relatively fine point. I probably still wouldn't attempt eyes with a brush like this myself. So overall, I would say that's a decent starter set of brushes. It's certainly not every type of brush you're ever going to want or need, but if you're first starting out and you really don't know what you're going to need or how much painting you're going to do or how much you're going to enjoy painting or what level of detail you intend to take your miniatures to, a decent base coat brush, a detail brush and a dry brush will get you by. And a set of the three for eight pounds, that's pretty reasonable for a recognized brand and a really good way to start your paintbrush collection. And I guess that's all I've got to say about that. As I said before, these aren't really tips or guidance I think everybody will find their own way when they are painting and they will find their own products that they enjoy using more than others. I guess the one tip that I would share is don't jump into buying a massive set of paint brushes. In the beginning you will probably find you gravitate to just a few brushes that you will use over and over again and then you can always add extra brushes to your collection a piece at a time 
rather than paying over £100 in one lump sum. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.